was 16 years old. I don't get nervous, so was I. <laughs> she was trouble. She had blonde hair, big, beautiful eyes. And in the fashion of the time, she was wearing a pair of, bl pair of blue jeans that took a spray bottle, a pair of pliers, and both her sisters to get them on. We were at a party, and I worked up the nerve to ask her to dance. And she looked at me and smiled and said, I don't know how to dance. Oh, shut down, in flames, spiraling in. I thought, well, you were just out there dancing with, um. But persistence being the greatest of all virtues because a single drop of water can eventually carve the Grand Canyon or some shit like that I heard one day. <laughs> I kept at it and I got her to go out on a date with me to the drive-in. Where I discovered quite by accident that she had been safety pinned into her blouse in six places. Her bra had been safety pinned shut and her pants were safety pinned shut. Although I don't know why, because it would have taken a crowbar and an act of Congress to get them off her. I thought I was doing well, till she asked if I could go for popcorn and she promptly locked me out of the car. <laughs> <clears throat> I've never talked so fast in my life with the exception of the one time I had to convince a police officer that the bloody baseball bat and four shotgun shells in the back of my car were completely innocent. <laughs> but that's a different story for another night. Um, <clears throat> I convinced her to let me back in the car. I convinced her to let me have a second date, and then a third. And by the third date, she was safety pin free. <laughs> we became a thing. Bonnie and Dave, one word, Bonnie and Dave. Are Bonnie and Dave coming tonight? Yes, they are. We were star-crossed lovers. She was in the band, and I was a cheerleader. <laughs> OK, I was the mascot, but it came out of the cheerleading budget. So technically, <laughs> I was a cheerleader. <clears throat> We were together for an awfully long time, and uh, I eventually decided I wanted to see if I could make it permanent. So we went to Jamaica, and on a perfectly beautiful night, we went for a walk on the beach, and I found a, a hammock between two palm trees, and it was a full moon, or if there wasn't, there is now, and I asked her if she wanted to be sitting in that hammock with me in 50 years and slid the ring on her finger and asked her to marry me. And she looked at the ring, completely surprised because we hadn't discussed it. This wasn't even in the cards. She looked at the ring and said the words, I will always remember, no fucking way. <laughs> and then she ran away and four hours later I found her and she said yes. <laughs> but that's the easy part. The falling in love, the fighting and making up, the hours and hours of repetitive exercises. <laughs> that's the easy part, the weddings and the parties and the during all that, you make promises to each other. And if you have kids, you make more promises to each other, spoken and unspoken. And what do you do when it's hard to keep those promises? Eight years ago, next month, I was diagnosed with leukemia. And not just leukemia, like this really nasty form of leukemia that just like pff, burns through you, kills you in a month. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> and I told everybody that I had the easy part. All I had to do was live. 
And when, you know, in that condition, it's a, it's a remarkably easy goal to focus on. My wife had two kids, 12 and six. She had a full-time job that was not only feeding us, was keeping me alive, because she had her health insurance. And every day, she was the smiling face who came to see me when I spent a month in the hospital. That's what keeping a promise is. <laughs> and uh, I know it's not going to be easy, baby, but we're going to get back to that, uh, that beach and those palm trees. Well, maybe not that exact one because of global warming, but <laughs> one just like it. <laughs> we're going to get back there again. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.